Your presenter today is Spring Walker, Senior GP Implementation Consultant. Spring has been with Interdyne BMI for nine years, working with Dynamics GP as a consultant. She has been working with Dynamics GP for 20 years since it was Great Plains Accounting in DOS. If you have any questions during today's presentation, please use the chat feature or the raised hand icon on your dashboard. There will also be time for some Q&A with Spring at the end of today's webinar. With that, Spring, take it away. Thank you, Kayla Joe, for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Spring Walker, and today I'll be telling you about two products that you may already own but may not currently be using, EFT for payables and SafePay. Both have a bit of setup and testing involved, but are easy to use as part of your normal pay, uh, payables process. So the first one we'll look at is EFT for payables. Have you ever wanted to pay your vendors via EFT, which is short for electronic funds transfer? It's simply a way to pay your vendors electronically, and um, you likely already own this product. Your organization can save paper and speed up the payment process for your vendors by using the EFT for payables management in Dynamics GP. EFT for payables is one of those modules often left out of the initial implementation and users sometimes forget it even exists. The good news is configuring EFT is a straightforward process and fairly simple, simple to implement. Before you begin your setup, you'll want to make sure you have a sample file from your bank or documentation of what format they require for submission. You'll also need logon and upload information from your bank so that you can upload the file generated from GP. But with that said, let me show you what the setup looks like within GP and how you would use the product. So it starts um, with uh, the navigation pane over here to go to financial. And once we have the financial um, navigation up, we'll go to the um, cards area page here and look at the checkbook. And within the checkbook, so you'll um, choose the checkbook that you want to set up the EFTs for. So in this case, I'm going to use Uptown Trust. There's an EFT bank button in the lower right-hand corner. If you click on that, you can begin the setup. Now, when you first come into this screen, this will be set to none, and you'll change it to United States or whatever the country or region is that you'll be using this checkbook and uh, generating your EFTs for. In this case, it was United States, and I've added uh, my bank routing number, uh, which is the, your transit number, as well as the bank account number. And then I've also included the bank identification number, bank company name, company ID number, and small company name that have been provided to me from the bank, or um, they may be also your uh, tax identification numbers, depending on what the bank uses. Once you have this part filled out, then you'll click onto the Payables Options button. Here you can choose if you want to use check numbers or EFT numbers to identify your transactions. The most typical um, option used is the EFT uh, numbers uh, separate from your check numbers. And of course, you can change the numbering scheme if you like by just typing over it here. Next, next, you will set up a file format to be used to upload to the bank. You can base this on vendor if you need to have different types um, for your different vendors, or you can have one single format. For the process of today's, um, or I'm sorry, for the purpose of today's demonstration, I'll be using the single format. So you'll type in a word um, that you want to use to describe this format, and then you'll click on the blue expansion um, arrow next to it. This will open the detail screen where you can set up your EFT format. So the thing to keep in mind in this screen is that your bank should let you know what type of format they want. So it's going to uh, most typically be a NACHA format of some sort. So it might be a NACHA PPD if it's a personal account, or it may be a CCD if it's a corporate account, um, and you would just choose the, the option that they have provided to you. When you choose that option, all of these um, fields populate for you. And so it looks a little intimidating when you're in this screen um, with all of the fields down at the bottom, um, but they are already populated with what the typical options are for that file format. So there shouldn't be too many changes um, necessary to get the format correct for your bank. Um, so as long as you find out ahead of time which one they're expecting, this process um, shouldn't be um, too bad. 
and you can, um, if you need to look at it and identify to make changes, you can change the line type from header to batch header and see the different lines and be able to adjust the various fields. Once you've made all the corrections that you need to here, um, then you'll just hit save. Again, if you needed to use different formats um, based on uh, the vendor, then you could choose that option here and be able to assign the various formats here. So I could assign the one I created as personal here, and then I could assign a corporate one um, to my corporate vendors. So that's another option if you uh, would like to assign them based on vendor rather than having a single format for all. But for today, I'm going to leave mine set to the single format option. Another option we have on this screen is to set the, um, the option for a payables pre-note, whether or not it is required. If the option is checked, then you will ha um, be needed to do a pre-note before you can do an actual EFT payment to a vendor. If it's not checked, you can still do a pre-note, but it wouldn't be required um, in order to move forward. So um, you can check this option if you'd like to, and then you can put in the number of days um, grace period you'd like to have for the pre-note. Below that, you'd want to set the paths to where the, um, the EFT file will be generated. This should be a shared location um, that anyone who needs to access it can um, have security to, but it also needs to be a protected location. Um, these files will have bank information for your vendors, and often we're paying, um, we're reimbursing our employees um, through this uh, process. So we want to make sure that we don't aren't giving out banking information um, to anyone that's um, it doesn't have access to um, the uh, accounting information normally. So you'll want to make sure that's a protected shared location, and then you can simply click on the folder here and browse out to where you would like to store it. If you want to change the name from payment, of course you can, and then just click Save. And you'll do the same thing for the pre-notes. If you will be doing any international EFTs, um, then you would need to set a path for the foreign payments as well. Once you've made your selections here, you'll just hit OK at the top of the screen, and it will close. And then you'll hit OK here to close the EFT bank maintenance screen. And then once again, we'll hit save on the checkbook itself to save all of that information. So once we have set up the checkbook for EFT payment, now we need to add that um, EFT or banking information to our vendors. So we're going to use our navigation pane again to jump over to purchasing. And then under the cards area page, uh, we're going to click on vendor. It's very important that you assign the, um, the payment information or the EFT information to the um, correct address. It's based on, the, on an address on the vendor card, but you want to make sure that it's the ven uh, vendor remit to address. So you can access that directly by zooming to it here um, in the blue arrows, I'm sorry, the blue underlined fields, and then going to the EFT bank or you can also click on address um, button here at the bottom and then choose the address ID you'd like. Just make sure you're setting it to the one that is marked as the remit to here. Um, otherwise, it won't uh, recognize that that's the EFT um, information for payment. So you'll click on the EFT bank button. And again, you'll choose United States. This would be set to none initially. So you would change that to United States or whatever um, region that you'll be working from. And uh, when you do that, then you'll fill in the information here. So um, here, put in an account number. Oops. And um, then you are, oh, oh, that's why I did that. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, accidentally hit uh, United Kingdom rather than United States. A little difference there. So I'm going to rekey in the routing number and the bank account number, and then I will hit OK. So when you're setting up your vendors, um, you will put in this EFT information for those that would like to be paid that way. Any new vendors you acquire, um, you would just make this part of your process in setting them up. 
All right, so now we'll hit save here. And save here. And just to confirm, yes, we did save the correct information. I'm going to hit uh, save on the vendor card now. Now, in order to um, issue an EFT, you step through your normal check run process, whatever that may be. For the purposes of our demonstration today, I'm just going to cut a check out of the edit check batch screen. So I'll create a batch. And this is where the process differs just a little. Um, on the batch screen itself, you'll change the payment method from check to EFT. Once you do that, um, the checkbook that you select must be set up for EFT, and any vendors that we select must be set up for EFT or we'll get a warning. So when I tab off the, of the batch ID here, all of my vendors that are out there and have something for payment um, become available. However, if I try to click on a vendor that I've not set up yet, I'll get an error. It's letting me know that I don't have um, the correct EFT information set up in order to um, use the EFT format. So I'm going to close that and go back to the vendor that I was planning on using. And I'm going to go ahead and select this um, invoice for payment for the $3,563. And so you mark the one you'd like to pay. And you'll notice that at the bottom of the screen, instead of print checks, it now says process. That's because the system recognizes that it's an EFT rather than a check that it's going to print. So I'll click the process button. And it takes us to the print payables check screen. Um, so familiar screen if you're used to doing pay runs. Um, nothing is any different on this screen. We'll just click process here at the top. All right, so now it takes us to the remittance screen. This is where we'll print out our remittance to send to the vendor. If you have your email um, turned on, then you can actually email these out to your vendors electronically um, at the time of uh, your check run. So that's nice. And here's what the remittance looks like. All right, so once you've printed out your remittances um, or emailed them out, then you'll want to post your batch. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the option to post and then hit process again. Okay, so my check has posted. Here is my um, posting journal. So I'll just close that. And now um, I'll do the final step to go ahead and create the file for my EFT. So everything thus far has been the same in my um, payables check run process, except for um, changing the EFT option on my batch. But now I have an additional step that I want to do. So I want to go to the um, generate EFT file option here under transactions. And I'll choose the checkbook that I've been using, which is Uptown Trust. And now you'll see that I have a, a batch here called EFT. Um, and um, I actually used the same batch that I did yesterday, so I have two payments in there. Um, and then I have uh, the date set up here. Of course, you could change that if you wanted to um, have the tra transmission or the settlement date be on a different day. I'm going to mark the um, batch that I want to upload and simply click the Generate EFT File button. So this message pops up and just lets me know um, where my uh, file has been saved to in case you know I wasn't the one that set it up, and it lets me know the name of it. So I'm, I know that I'm looking for Payment Uptown Trust, and then it's going to be dash 0003. So I'm going to browse out to that location. So this will be under my Documents, and then training And here is my 
my file right here. You can actually um, do these files not recommended um, within GBAS. There's research later as well. Organization can help protect itself from check fraud by using SafePay in Microsoft Dynamics GP. Uh, SafePay is part of the e-banking suite, which you may already own. Um, Safe Pay, or Positive Pay as it's sometimes called, allows you to generate a file detailing the checks and or EFTs that you have created and then upload to the bank. Um, the file is used by your bank to confirm a check's authenticity before it is paid. And before you begin your setup, again, you'd want to make sure that you have a sample file or some requirements from your bank as to what they're expecting. Um, have a plan in, in place to test the file. And um, again, you probably don't want to change that file in between uh, generating it and uploading it to the bank. We'd like for it to be generated properly. So um, the setup and all of the functionality for SafePay is contained in the financial series. So we'll click on the financial navigation pane. And um, it's actually under the routines area page uh, that you'll find SafePay rather than under transactions or cards. So um, we will expand Safe Pay under Routines, and I'll show you how the configurator is set up. The configurator is the first step in setting up Safe Pay, and you would give your bank format a name. Um, I've created one called Uptown Trust um, 0604, which is simply my checkbook name, and then the last four digits of the checking account number, and then. Um, I have just the same thing in my description. Um, of course, your description can be longer. And then um, some banks require different, um, different things than others. So in this case, we're doing a, a simple one that just has one line for the detail. Some banks will require header lines or um, additional um, footer lines with totals and things like that. Um, but uh, most of them, or a lot of them, um, just need this simple uh, detail line, and it can be very quick to set up. So um, <clears throat> what you would do is go ahead and choose your output type, which could be tab delimited, um, comma delimited, or a fixed uh, length field. And the easiest to work with are the tab delimited or the comma delimited. Um, the fixed length requires a little bit more setup. So if you can do one of the delimited um, options, that's usually easier. Um, the record type you'll choose here. So in this case, I'm doing the, the detail, the account line. And then you give it a name. And this can be whatever makes sense to you. Um, I'm just calling it the account number line. Next, you'll reference the number of fields that um, will be contained in the line. So in this case, I have seven. Once you have uh, set that, um, set the, all of your field options here, you'll click Save. And when you do that, then they become available over here to um, label. So what you'll do is um, either highlight one and zoom into it, or you can double click on it and it will take you to the output fields option um, screen. So here, um, you give it a name, and then you choose what field maps to it. So this is my account number, so I'm mapping it to my account number. Um, then you choose what the type is. So this is going to default as text because I chose account number. And then I'll click Save. Now notice when I click Save, the field number is going to change from 1 to 2. And now I'm looking at the um, ABA number. So in this case, there wasn't a field to pull it from, so I'm using the constant and I've typed in um, what my routing number or ABA number is here. And then I'll just save that. And again, then it goes to the next field, which was check number. And we'll choose from the drop down the check number field. The next one is the amount. So this is going to be my check amount from the drop down. And here we have an, another option. We have an option for how to set the currency format. So um, if there is a dollar sign or not, or if there is a decimal place or not, you can make these changes here to accommodate whatever the bank is looking for. And then there's another option here, um, and I've chosen field amount. Um, if this were a, um, a foot field or a header field, then I might be pulling a field total or checks total, but in this case I just want the amount of this one field, so um, I'm using field amount. The next was my issue date, so the issue date, um, we're going to be using the, the 
check issue date is the field, and then of course it's a date type. So then we can choose what the format is. So in this drop down for field uh, format, you may choose which of these um, formats that the bank actually wants or can um, accommodate. And then we'll click save again. Um, this one is an add or cancel indicator. Um, it can also be called a transaction type or a transaction code. And um, what it is is what the field, um, which field will identify whether this is um, issuing a check or canceling a check. Um, sometimes it's called voiding. Voiding and canceling are typically the same. Um, so uh, which field will that be? And you can identify it here. Um, the next one is payee. Um, and of course, this is the person you're paying, uh, and it'll be a text field. So we'll just click Save here. Now, either in this screen where it says Codes Entry, or over here in the main screen where it says Codes Entry, um, we need to enter what those codes are that would go with the um, transaction code or the um, add or cancel code. So when we click on that button, we can go to Transaction Codes Entry. And this is the, the step most commonly missed, um, just because it, it's kind of up at the top and it doesn't prompt you to go into it. So here what we want to do is identify um, when we were, are issuing a check. So in this case, we have an I for issue, and we're issuing a check. And we're omitting checks with alphas. The reason for that is because we're going to use SafePay to upload our EFTs as well as our paper checks. So we want... Um, <clears throat> to be able to differentiate those. And so that my EFTs start with EFT and my checks are numerical. So I'm going to omit checks um, with alphas in the check type so that I can separate those um, to the EFT. So the next type I want to set up is the void. So in this case, void is indicated by a C um, for cancel. And I want to send those voids as zero amounts. So rather than a $100 voided check coming across as $100 with a C, it'll come across as a zero with a C. And then finally, if you will be doing EFTs, then you'll need to set up the EFT type. Um, in this case, I have E as my EFT indicator. And I am not omitting the checks with alphas in this case because I want the alphas um, to pull in. And I will um, hit Save. Now, once you have set up uh, the corresponding codes and you have entered all of your field uh, mappings, then you can um, just close this screen because you've been hitting Save as you went along. And then now all of your names should be populated, and you can simply hit Save at the top of this screen. Once you've set up the configurator, the next step is to set up the upload maintenance screen. So again, this is under Routines. And so in the upload maintenance screen, this is where we link the checkbook to that output format that we just created and create a bank upload ID. So I've created one called Uptown Trust. And your bank ID should already be set up. That's linked to your checkbook. So if you look at your checkbook, um, and let me pull that up again so you can see. So back underneath cards, my checkbook. If I look at the checkbook itself, you should see a bank ID associated with it. That's the bank ID that you want to use in this screen. So back over to my safe pay um, bank link maintenance. So here I, I'm choosing the Uptown option for the bank ID. And then my output format, I'm choosing the one that we just created or just reviewed, the Uptown Trust. 0604. And then the last step is to add the checkbooks. So um, you can add multiple checkbooks if they have the same bank and the same format. Um, in this case, they, they would need to have the same routing number because I used a constant for that. Um, but I could have two checkbooks um, at the same bank um, using the same format if that makes sense. Or of course, you could set up different formats if, if that's easier. Um, so you simply click Add Checkbook. Choose the checkbook you want to add and hit select. And it will be added to the list here. And the next thing is to set up the path. So just like in the uh, EFT for payables, we need to set up where we want this file to go. Um, and again, it should be a shared location that's generally protected. And so um, you would click the folder to browse out to where you'd like to save it and give it a name. I'm going to call mine Safe Pay Uptown, 
and then just click the Open um, button to save your uh, changes. And then um, if you do want to include those EFT transactions, then you can mark the option here to include EFTs. If you do not want to include those EFTs, then just uncheck that box. Um, the communication link would be if you had um, a, an additional piece of software installed on your machine um, that would uh, need to be linked to it. So this would be a path to an executable. I don't have that set up, so I'm not going to mark that option. Once you have everything um, set up, you'll notice all the required fields are filled in. They're usually in bold and red or bold and black. Then you can hit save. Now um, I'll go ahead and do another check run. So I'll jump over to purchasing. And again, I'll just use the edit check batch and create my save pay batch. Now this time there's nothing any different about it. I'm going to leave it set to check. I'm simply choosing the checkbook and hitting save. Now I'm going to choose my same um, vendor, Ace Travel, and I'll pay this $43 invoice. And I'll print my check, so I'm going to click Print Checks. It pops me into the Print Payables Check screen, and I can verify the next check number, um, verify the correct check format, and then I'll click print. I'll just print this to my screen. All right, so here is my check. Um, everything looks good, so I'll go ahead and close that. Um, of course, as a, a general best practice, you always want to make sure that all of your checks have printed properly and nothing got eaten or, um, you know, uh, didn't, two checks didn't get pulled through together. Make sure all your checks look good before you post. Um, it's much easier to void or reprint your checks from this screen um, than it is once they're posted. So, of course, verify everything prints properly first. Um, but once they have, then we want to go ahead and post our batch. So I'll hit process. All right, and here is my posting journal for my checks. Everything looks good, no errors, so I'll go ahead and close that. And now um, the final step to upload um, my safe pay file to the bank will be um, back under financial and under routines. Everything for safe pay is in the same place. Um, so now that I have generated my check batch and I did my EFTs earlier, I want to go ahead and upload that file to the bank or, or generate the file. So I'll go to transactions upload. And I'll choose my bank upload ID. And then um, you simply set a date range that you want to use. So in this case, I just want today's. And then you click the Load or Reload Transactions button. So I have a few um, EFTs that I've done since the last time that I um, created a file. And I have the one check that I just did. So. <clears throat> All I'll need to do in order to create the file is click the um, Upload button here at the top. And then it's asking, am I going to proceed with Upload for the selected transactions? I do want to proceed, so I'll go ahead and click the Proceed button. And it lets me know that the file has been created and where it is. So I'll hit OK here. And then it tells me to go ahead and proceed to upload the file so that I can get a confirmation number. This process actually um, prompts you for a confirmation number. So what you would do is go over, find your, um, find your uh, safe pay file, and upload it to the bank. Now, just like with the other one, you can edit or view this if you wanted to um, in Notepad. This is what it looks like before it gets uploaded. Um, notice we have the little indicators for the eyes. Um, now I'll go ahead and uh, close that. So let's say I uploaded it to my bank and I get a confirmation number of web, you know, 234. So I'll type in my confirmation number and hit successful. Then it gives me a, um, a little report of the uploaded transactions, which I can print or, of course, I can just... Um, you know, close the screen. But on this um, screen, it shows me the transactions that I uploaded along with the confirmation numbers that I entered. 
Um, once you have uh, completed your uploads, if you ever want to go back and see the history, you can go to transactions history or summary history, either one, and then find your checkbook and then you can scroll through the individual um, uploads that you've done. Okay. Um, this concludes my presentation. Uh, if there are any questions, now would be a good time. There hasn't been any questions that have came in through the questions um, box, but oh, we have somebody raised their hand. Sorry, there's a big list. Okay, I'm going to unmute Lisa. Lisa? Oh, yes. Uh, Spring, on the, um, when you're doing the EFTs, you said that you could uh, also send out a email or a copy of the EFT that you're uh, you know, sending out. Yes, ma'am. Where would I do that at? Is it the remittance alignment form? Is that the one that I would select? Well, um, there's actually a little bit of setup to that, which is under the administration um, navigation pane here. Uh, and then, let's see, it's under company and um, email settings. So you would need to step through the email settings and the email message setup. And then the, um, there's this also a, an email button on your vendor um, where you can select that that vendor would like to get an emailed remittance and um, choose if they would like to get a PDF or you know HTML, what their format should be, that sort of thing. And, um, and then when you print the remittance, you'll get an option that says to email and or print. So you can do them both at the same time. They'll be triggered right out of your Outlook. It's a very seamless process once it's set up. Okay, so I would get someone from admin to do the email settings and yes. message setups. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And then okay. there's an additional um, screen under the vendor card um, that, for email. And so you would um, simply, let me find a vendor, um, simply mark the option uh, to enable the emails and which ones. So you enable vendor remittance and then choose, in this case, if they wanted a PDF. And that would be, a, that's underneath the vendor thing? Yes, ma'am, exactly. Okay, thank you. You bet. And then, Spring, during that question, there was a question that came in from Andrea. Is there a way to change the EFT remittance layout to look like the check remittance? Yes, that format can be modified. Okay, it so just takes a little time, so yes, that it can be. Okay, and there's a couple other raised hands, so I'm going to unmute Anne. Hi, Anne. Um, it doesn't look like I'm able to unmute them. Unmute Anne. Anne, if you have a question, if you could type it in the questions box, I'll answer it then. I'm going to unmute Tracy Graham. So, Tracy, if you have a question, you go ahead. Uh, going back to that last question, Spring, Andrea was wondering um, if you can be a more specific um, than it takes time, if you can be a little bit more oh. specific. Well, it depends um, on how much modification is to how much time. Um, the, the reports can definitely be modified. Um, it just can be a, a bit time consuming depending on how much modification needs to be done. Um, the, the way that it's set up, um, it's the Word documents want to collapse like that, where it ends up being a shorter document, and the um, and the report writer, the other tool, tends to take up the whole page um, with the lines down the page. So it takes a little um, configuration to to make them work that way. Usually, usually a couple of hours, um, you know, probably two to three hours, I would say, of a consultant's time to to modify that report in order to, to make it look like the other. Um, however, I did use the, um, the Word format. So if you just wanted it to look more like the standard GP reports, you don't have to use the template. Um, let me show you. Uh, let me quick do another um, check so I can show you the standard remittance. Oops. Um, uh,
because that may be more uh, the point of her question. Um, okay, so let's do EFT, save, and again, let's choose my vendor. I'm running out of things to pay. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to do a different screen so I can do an unapplied payment. Bear with me just a sec. All right, so I am going to um, send this vendor $500. And so um, when I print my remittance, this time I'm going to use the standard, not the template. So I'll still choose uh, the remittance form. And by the way, here's the option for sending the uh, document and email. So once it's all set up, all you do is check that box, and it'll try to email the person. Um, so here I'm going to print my remittance form, and I'll change it from uh, template back to standard and see if this is closer to what you're looking for. That looks a bit more like the the check remittance does. So I don't know if that's if that's what you're wanting. It's as simple as just changing. But if you want it to come out in Word so that you can email it, then it would take some time to format. Does that answer your question better? She hasn't said anything back, but I'll move on to the next question. Um, yep, she said okay. yes and, and no, we want the the detail. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe we can follow up with Andrea after the after the webinar. Certainly, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, so I'm going to move on to Anne's question. Um, when choosing items to pay, is there a way to only have EFT vendors show up instead of hit and miss and kind kinding the vendor that has EFT? That's a good question. Um, not that I am aware of. Um, that um, perhaps under the select checks you could um, let's see if that's an option. No, I I don't know of a way to do that. Um, uh, I'm sorry. And then she also goes on. Can can one choose multiple invoices from multiple vendors? than choosing items to pay. Better said, can you only choose one EFT vendor to pay at, one, at a time? No, you can absolutely choose multiple vendors. If I had you know, 15 vendors that were all set up for EFT and I needed to pay them, I can choose multiple invoices from each vendor and it will create um, them all um, within the file and they can all be paid. So that's not a problem at all. You don't have to do separate batches except for the EFT versus checks. Um, I'm going to unmute Donald, because Donald has a question. Hi, Donald. Oops. Donald, did you have a question? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll try Nicole White. Hey, Nicole, did you have a question? Okay, well, if you have a question, just feel free to write it in the questions box. Um, another one from Anne is, is there a report one could run that shows what vendors are set up with EFT? Uh, um, you should be able to run a smart list for that. Um, so if I open up my smart list and go to vendors um, uh, purchasing. And then, I'm not sure it might actually be vendor addresses, but I would assume we could get to it here. Um, it might end up being a, a custom smart list. That's an excellent suggestion for the next, um, <laughs> next release. I do not see it there um, either. Sorry about that. And then if we could go back to Andrea's question, um, they were wondering, they wanted to say the description. 
Um, we need they needed to see the description. Um, you could see the description on either on either one of the forms. It's just a matter of whether you would like to have. Uh, if you want the ability to email, then you have to use the Word document, which was that first kind of blue template that that came up. Um, the second one that was more um, just black and white, like the standard GP reports, um, that one would not be able to be emailed. But either one can can be modified to you know link them in the description or add on other fields if if you'd like. Okay. I mean, it looks like so far we don't have any other questions that came in through the questions box. Um, okay. So thank you, Spring, for a great presentation. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending today. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we are offering a fixed bid implementation through June to deploy these two products. If interested, please reply to the follow-up email you will receive from me. Um, and included in that follow-up email, there will be a link to the a recording of this presentation. Um, so that will be there. And on behalf of everyone at Interdyne BMI, we want to thank you for your attendance and have a great rest of your day. Yes, thank you.